Hi there again. So let's move to the last variant of the cylinder case. Okay, so now we're going to use a compressible solver. So pretty much everything is exactly as we have done so far. So we know very well how the simple files works, boundary conditions and everything. The only difference now we need to use a new solver. So we're going to use raw pimple phone. Here you have the description. So remember you can use phone info or you can go and and browse the source code or the limited documentation, the oxygen documentation to to find the, the, the best solver, okay? But let's use this one that is a solver, in com a compressible solver that can be used for uh, low and high speed flows, okay? In this case will be, let's say, low, low speed or medium speed, okay? And it is fully unsteady with turbulence modeling. So we have we are going to solve new equations. Okay, besides U and P, we have now also temperature energy equations. So we have this new equation. There will be new dictionaries and the discretization. Also, we need to say how to solve those equations. Okay, so <clears throat> basically the case. So something important. And now when we move to compressible solvers, okay and you have to be very careful. We cannot use any more dynamic similarity as we were using in the incompressible cases, okay? Now here we need to give the actual proper fluid properties and also take the dimensions of the, of the domain, right dimensions and so on, okay? So see that in this case we are scaling the diameter of cylinder, so it's very small. We have a velocity about 150 meters per second, which it is something about max 0 0.4 so it's not inc incompressible anymore okay <clears throat> so this is shouldn't be here okay the flow let me raise here okay so we have a uh, temperature variations and a relative large uh reynolds number okay so the new files that we have here is now we have thermophysical uh properties here's where we're going to define the physical properties of the flow and this one is turbulence model okay so i just going into details about this one where we define these physical properties so you open these files you are going to find this okay so here is where you set up these thermodynamics models okay so here a specific interests are this one tw line 21 this is the model to compute the viscosity so you have different models so remember the banana method mr spell something i will give you all the actions so we're here we're using here the sutherland model to compute viscosity okay the changes due to temperature and then also for cp we have constant cp so we're using this model h constant okay an equation of a state perfect gas that sounds like this okay so you define this model and then you have this final option what is the formulation of the energy equation that you would like to solve so there are a few formulations when we go into advanced physics we're going to discuss more in details but we're using this formulation enthalpy equation then here in mixture in this dictionary you define the, prop the actual properties of the flow. So in this case, it's air at 20 Celsius at sea level. So also we need to use absolute pressure. Okay, and these are the properties. Okay, molecular weight, CP, okay. HF is not used, so we put it zero. So this is just when you have phase change. Okay, the heat of fusion, okay. And then transport, these are the coefficients related to the equation to the uh Sutherland model okay so if you use constant here you are going to define the Prandtl number and dynamic viscosity okay so this one we already talked about this one and in zero these are the files that now we have so besides pu and the turbulent quantities we have t which correspond to temperature and we have a new turbulent quantity also alpha t which is the turbulent thermal diffusivity okay and that's all okay so this is tariff boundary conditions it's a standard i'm not going into details and also for the turbulence models it is exactly the same i just want to stress that when it comes to pressure in compressible solvers you need to give absolute pressure and look at the units actual units are pascal wall shear stresses also are pascal so be careful with this you put here zero the solver will diverge immediately because that is equivalent to working in vacuum and these solvers uh, it will crash okay is you work in, in vacuum okay but the rest of this setup is pretty much the same okay so in t see that also we define the temperature which is in kelvin by the way okay so inlet fix the value here is zero gradient and the rest is like this so this should be symmetry by the way so 
it's not a problem okay and then we have these three dictionaries where control the numeric so the control did is a standard okay so as we are using pimple phone by the way we have access to this auction so this is a, another advantage of these solvers that are based in the pimple in the pimple pressure velocity coupling or raw pimple phone pimple phone interferon so that you can use these auctions to control the time step to to have a given current number so in this case the current is, is two actually i think it's 10 okay and then you define the standard function objects the all of all the function objects i would like to focus in this one for forces okay because here also you need to give draw the <coughs> the reference density okay that you are using to compute okay so remember that we're working at 20 celsius okay and sea level so this is the standard or average density and the reference velocity here which should be 150 and referring area then the numerics so it's pretty much the same but now you have this new variable so this is related to the new equation that we're solving which is the energy equation and then you have the other the standard ones okay so that's it we go pretty much all the solvers is the same as the previous one okay so at this point let's move to the virtual machine okay so i will go to c24 which by the way you have uh remember that you have here the readme and you will see the, the all the cases but c25 will be raw pimple phone at Reynolds 200 so something equivalent to c1 c2 then if you want to go supersonic you have this case c20 21 22 so you can check this one so there are shock wave and so on but here we remain with and we, we are not solving shot wave okay so to run the case uh you have there the automatic screen uh, and, and let me go open here okay and open also just to go here see that you have your standard dictionaries okay this we know well what is doing these are term <coughs> thermophysical properties okay so see that here i'm putting transport suitor lamp but as you use constant you will need to define these variables and so on. but every of this auction you can go to the search code or you can misspell something there and will give you the auction so funny info sometimes also will give you more more more, more information so now if we go into zero and um, we'll open this one so see that we have upt k new omega turbulent quantities okay standard ones and this is the new one that we haven't seen so far so i will open just this one and look at that what we have here this is a turbulent thermal diffusivity and the setup is very standard like this okay it's just at the walls that you need to add this one and you add this function here it's a wall function and that's all okay so i'm not going into details but again if you are curious if you want to know more Okay, I will stress a lot this utility because it's very, very, very useful. You go here, fun info, and let's see, let's see if it will find or it can find information regarding this specific, specific uh, boundary condition. Okay, fun info, and see that there is some. No, it didn't find any. Nothing found. Okay, so let me probably erase. let me raise this part compressible here okay this one it found some information so see that it's telling you thermal diffusivity tooling thermal diffusivity and how you use it okay and then let me move before running let me move here to system and see that we have the standard files okay control it and we have this new that later when we talk about source term we're going to address that okay but let me show you control D. it's very standard so now remember that the domain is a smaller larger velocity which by the way i didn't show you that the velocity is you open here okay it's 150 so if you do your math uh, mass and you have your, your, your properties you will see that the Reynolds is about 20,000 so see the control D your definition say that we're running with a ra rather large current number okay because this case when it runs you will see that it times times is very very small so you put it here a current and one so I put it to 10 you can go even 20 or 30 will run but you start to lose accuracy just to show you then you have the traditional function objects SB skins okay here you have the standard definition okay the new 
variables that you are solving, the energy equation. This one is related to the turbulence model. Okay, so you should use that one. There is no problem. And then SV solution, okay, your linear solvers, P, U. So see that we solve the enthalpy formulation of the energy equation, which is H. We are not directly resolving for T. Then there is a small solver there that it will compute that one using the equation of a state. But actually we're computing H, but then we can translate that into temperature. Uh, that is done internally in the solver, which by the way. And then let me talk about this pimple loop, okay? So this is the pressure velocity coupling, okay? So it is an iterative piece, just to put it in this way. So recommend you to use this, these actions and then this also is standard and this is the outer corrector. We have seen that this one will give you more accuracy stability but it will slow down the computation. But look at the physics that we start to have here. It starts to become severe. Now it, it is a, a large velocity Mach number, something about 0 0.4, okay? So also we have a very large CFL number. So it is important to get stability and we get that stability by increasing the number of outer correctors, okay? So when you start, if you want to run using large times, it is strongly recommended to, to, to increase this one. So here I know two is more than enough, but it might happen that in some cases you might go to five or 10. More than 10 is not practical. It's better to reduce your time step or, or work in some, somewhere else, okay? But in this case two, it is enough. And then you read the rest and then you have relaxation factor a standard for an on a solver. So I want to mention something about this. In previous version, if you have used open phone seven, eight or older, you have this enter here. Okay, so these are, are to limit the change of pressure or, or density. Now you know that you start to run the simulation, it might happen that you have very large peaks or very small peaks, and that can cause some serious stability problems and can make the solver diverge. So there is a way to control this. So all commercial, if you have used commercial software, all these auctions are, are implemented. Most of them are hidden from the user, but are implemented. In Open for 9, they move this auction from here, they move it in this new input file, SB constraints, okay? So we have it here. So usually this is important to put these constraints in compressible solver. In compressible solvers, you don't have that, that influence of, of large changes of pressure or you don't have even density, okay? So look at how, this is how you put it. So you put two limiters, let's say, a limit in pressure. And basically what you are doing is multiplying the pressure by these factors, okay? So if my pressure, and let me say my starting pressure is atmospheric pressure, 10, 13, 12, you multiply by 0 0.25 and by five. And that is what it's going to do. So if when you are running, the pressure becomes larger or smaller than these values, what is going to do the solver is going to limit that. Okay, and this is very important because we call the question of a state. So for instance, you have pressure here that is 100 Pascal, that is going to give you some problems. So you put these limits, okay, it's very important. And also you, ha you can have something equivalent for temperatures. It can happen that you might have some peaks and you put it like this in temperature, okay? So in this case, this one is not very important, the most important is this one, but just just to to, <clears throat> to recapitulate that this is equivalent to what was done previously in FV solutions like this. See that you have p min factor, p max. Okay, so now we put it in FV constraints. So at this point, we're ready to run. Okay, nothing to add. Uh, it's run solver and voila, off you go. So let me open a new window and I want to show you the beginning of this file. The log file. So see that you are running, telling you the loops, the equation of state and everything. And see here that at the beginning is computing those limits. It's telling you that minimum and maximum are this. So if by any chance your actual pressure, the computed one, becomes larger or smaller than this, it will be, let's say, threshold to these values. Okay. So that is very, <clears throat> this option is particularly important in compressible flows or supersonic flows. Okay, it might happen very often that you can have some, some peaks. And just let me stop it in the brutal way, okay, control C. Just to show you something as well, that remember that you you can explore the source code or you can misspell things here, okay? So if I go like this, okay, that doesn't exist, and I try to run the solver, raw pimple phone C that is telling you that this is doesn't exist, these are the models that you have. So see that 
these are your models okay so if you want to know what you have there and probably also let's say that you can go also full on full on info and let me go Sutherland and it's telling you here some information of Sutherland tutorial how things are computing and so on okay and you can do the same with any dictionary so for instance look at that if I don't give these two keywords here and I, I try to run so compulsory keywords is you don't define it open form will complain and it will tell you see that you are missing this keyword okay the same will be like let's say and um, let me raise also what we have so far for one list time minus rn okay so i raise the times and let's say that i forgot to define alpha t okay if i try to run see that it's telling you that you are missing that file okay so open phone is you are missing one input file or is you are missing one entry whatever open phone will always, always let you know what is the error or not always but let's say most of the time what is the error and what is it so always read careful your your output screen okay don't enter into panic so let me go here into momentum transport so if i misspell something here see that it's telling me these are all the options available you have all those tur turbulence models let's say that i forgot to to define this model so let me rename it okay the, the, this file i will rename it if i try to run then it will tell you you are missing that file okay so if this is your problem just look at one tutorial where you have that file and add that that file to to your case okay and the same will be here in system that is you miss one of the compulsory files compulsory files are this one sv skin sv solution and control did sv constraint is optional okay you don't need to have that that file okay and just to see the options that you have here so if i misspell something there i will try to run okay whoops so i will run and i need to go to the beginning okay for some reason uh, oh, bah, 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 bah. okay so see that this is telling me that this that i put there doesn't exist these are the options available so these are the constraints that you have available see here that you have a constraint also in velocity so sometimes also this is very important as well when you start computations you know that you have this instantaneous velocity that might be hitting the body so sometimes happens that those initial iterations the velocity can go very large so what you can do is just impose a limit in your velocity during the first iterations then you switch it off and that's also those are techniques to to stabilize the solution it's perfectly valid i do it very often in this particular case for me it's more important to put those limiters in, in pressure and temperature okay so i just wanted to show you that just to remind you okay that read careful the screen that you have an error open phone always will let you know so let, let's run the case from from scratch let me close all these files here and let me launch here also python plot washer okay that solver and see that we have everything running with no problem there okay your residuals and let me open another window okay uh, for instance we can go here and plot the we have the f coefficients okay so see that we're plotting coefficient now okay so these are leaf and drag, drag coefficient okay so see that very standard so importance is we change we went from incompressible to compressible we have now temperature see that you have the new variable it's not temperature enthalpy recall is the energy equation formulation and nothing changed everything is standard what the important thing is here choose the right numerics okay so if we're doing a large time step it's better to do more corrections you see here that you have those two corrections and see that cfl 10 very large and even is this CFL is large? Look at that, your, your delta T is still is small, okay? But this is the price that you pay when you increase velocity, okay? So as you go max to this times, it will become even smaller. But you can go larger in your current number, but you start to lose some accuracy, you know? 
kind of accuracy. So at this point, I will let this case run in a, a little bit. Okay, actually see that it's relatively fast, okay? So see that now we have already here the onset of the instability. By the way, also pay attention, the tiny scales are different from one of the incompressible case, obviously different velocities, so they are. There are different time scales, so if you normalize time scales, probably you're, you're going to get something similar. But look at that, what is interesting, look at that, you have here this oscillation there. So the solution is not periodic, it is oscillatory. What could be? You will need to analyze your results, or so you have some vortex shedding, some shedding with different frequencies. Okay, probably some interaction, strange interaction in the boundary layer, some separation. Or it might be that you have some you, you have reached the critical Mach number and you start to, to, to have their supersonic flow. Who knows? Okay, since that you need to, to give interpretation. Okay, that is our job when we, we, we run these simulations. Okay, so what is interesting here? So let me stop this one because I also have already here new plot. And let me go. Let me go here, scripts, I have another script here. Okay, so I already compute one solution, okay? So see that I let it run until 0 0.01 seconds and see that this is what we have. So see there's quite a strange behavior. Probably it might be that I use a time set too large and here I have some frequency, some strange frequency. So it might be interesting to run this one and compare with a smaller CFL number to see if you capture the same behavior. But look at that. Different Reynolds numbers, different behaviors, okay? Okay, at this point, I think it's running smoothly, okay? And we can do also some post-processing. Okay, let me go here. So first, let me stop this simulation, okay? Because let me close here, okay, Python go, go away, this one also, and let me stop this simulation, I don't want to stop it in a brutal way, in this case, I will go here and I will do it in the elegant way, how you should do it, right now, okay, boom, okay, and now, stop, and as you go back and you read your script, you will see that there is a final part in this script that after computing the solution here, it is computing the Mach number. So the Mach number is derived from velocity, okay? So there is no problem, but if you want to compute it, you have it here. Okay, so compute the Mach number, and we have everything here, and I go part of them. And we can do our post-processing. So load your variables, your environment variables here. So Mac number, let me go to the last time, and we have it here. Okay, so see that our inlet Mac number is something about 0 0.4, 0 0.42, if I would recall. But see that we have it there, we have variations in temperature. Okay, so see that we have it there. They are not large, but see that we have, and according to the temperature, your viscosity, molecular viscosity, and also turbulent viscosity will change. So remember here, where you have large values now, it's where your turbulence model is kicking in, and so So we have also alpha T, okay, so turbulent diffusion. And finally, just to remind you that we have also Y plus, that is a quantity that is plot at the walls. So actually, we have also access to, to density uh, before showing that. Let me show that you have their density, okay? So density, you can compute it from the equation of a state, okay? That is not a big deal. And just to, let's plot in the cylinder wall. I want to plot again Y plus. You go Y plus, extremely important quantity, okay? So this quantity should be, as I say, something between one and 500, okay? It is computed only at the walls, okay? And you control this quantity okay, by controlling the mesh, okay? So if your Y plus value is too large, let's say you have something about 1,000, to reduce that Y plus, you need to have a finer mesh normal to the wall. So to go, from, in this case, let's say, to go from 1,000 to 500, you need to half that this height, okay? So that is how you control the Y plus. You never know a purity of this quantity, okay? So you need to run a simulation, and then you need to assess the value okay so you run usually you run a few iterations look at your y plus you see that okay my y plus is, is 100 okay let it run you run you see 
that the y plus value is about 2000 there is a problem you need to do remission you need to have a finer mesh okay so use it is it is an iterative process process i will show you some tricks to get an estimation on we other address tone and smaller but pretty much it, it is an iterative process so that's all okay so we address sim simple case we address a lot of physics the most important physics okay so just to remind you here that here <coughs> at the end of these slides you will you will find this one here you have the description of the different cases okay you have about 28 variations of, of this cylinder so you have the description there so for instance see that we have it also with moving bodies okay social this shouldn't be the in that is in previous version we have it with moving bodies okay <coughs> Uh, multi-phase flows, interphone, okay, supersonic flows, and so on, okay. So feel free to play around with these cases, okay. And if you have problems, just when we do the Q and A, the Q and A session, just <coughs> give me your questions, and we can we can address this one. But it's a very nice case. I enjoy it. I really like it. There is a lot of validation data, by the way, about this case. So that's all for this model one okay now we move to model two and well see you next time bye